<laughs> fresh from the garden, it doesn't get fresher. Yeah, hopefully that chicken poop was composted. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> So this is our second weighing of our baby goats. This time, the goats are just a little over a month old. Getting bigger. That's wrong. You got it strangled. It right. She's strangling the goat. Well, he didn't hook it right. Look. This is not hooked at all right, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> up now. Okay. Send him in. Do you see which hook? This is the one that goes to the top, not the other one. Take your feet through. Wait, wait, I'm sure you're semi-secure. Oh, but we didn't turn the scale on first. <laughs> <laughs> just staying in the goat. Well, leave it, leave them up there. Let's just well, turn it this on. This is easier. Because you need to wait for it to zero out first. See? Oh, I see. Yeah. So, just over 14 pounds. Yep. He's such a good boy. Look at him just sitting there and like, I'm all relaxed. So, I'm that's relaxed. Um, roughly twice what you were the last time we weighed you. Just hanging out. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Brian, don't. <laughs> He's gonna slide out and I don't want him to. He's not gonna slide we out. We could slide out. He's not gonna slide out. out. He's not gonna slide <laughs> out. No. Don't, don't, don't hurt the goat. Yeah, we won't hurt our goat. No, mama won't let nothing bad happen to the good goat. Are you ready to go back? Hmm? Pretty boy. You said you're a pretty boy. Nurse, he's a good boy. Aren't ya? You're all around belly right now. Hang it up. Hang it up. There we go. <laughs> It just looks silly. Did you zero the scale? <laughs> it's 10 pounds. Yeah, she's a big girl, a 10 pound girl. So that's roughly three times the last time we weighed you. This is a chubby, chubby girl. Huh. Oh, it's scary. Let's let her down. Huh. You 
you're free. You want to go back home? Say bye bye. Bye bye, internet. <laughs> No last words for your fans. You say, this was a terrifying experience. I only did it for you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she has no problem running back. So, what I have here is some Jerusalem artichokes that I ordered from Etsy and they arrive in this little pouch that's all nice and sealed up and they've just got Jerusalem artichokes. So what these are, they're also known as sunchokes and some other names, but they are kind of a really interesting vegetable tuber, kind of comparable to maybe like a potato, but they have really pretty sunflower-like, small sunflower-like flowers, and they will grow in partial shade, and they actually will take over an entire bed, which is why I'm standing in front of one of our smaller beds, and they will bloom this summer, and then in the fall, we will have sunchokes to eat and roast. So, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. I've only really kind of seen other people do this and have wanted to do it myself, so I am definitely not an expert, but you can see these are already, they've got roots on them. They've got kind of like a potato would have where it's got an eye. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually interplant these. So these are very cool season crops that I have in here. So I have spinach, I have arugula, I have kale, and yeah, the kale and probably even some of the arugula will kind of hang out for quite a while in our growing zone, especially in this bed that gets kind of sunlight, but not a lot of sunlight. So um, these beds unfortunately don't get as much sunlight. So I think this will be a good place for them. They'll kind of be, I'm gonna have to watch. I've planted some garlic in here. And so I do have some garlic. And so I need to make sure that I give enough spacing to that. But I think what's gonna happen with these is they're gonna go kind of down and shoot flowers up. And that will look really pretty with the garlic coming up in between them. And then I can just leave this bed with garlic and Jerusalem artichokes going on for the summer and it will be nice. So, and then I won't have to worry about this bed again until next year. In which case I will do, I will dig them up for the fall and I'll plant some fall spring type crops in here. So this will, I think this will be a good idea. So what I'm doing is I'm getting them damp and I've seen people mostly using like a spray bottle for this, but I figure I can just do it this way. It's mostly about getting them slightly damp, which since these are gonna be under this ground cover for a little while, is probably a good idea to get them a little damp. And then I'm just going to dig down in here Try not to disturb my other plants. And you want to talk down. about how uh, long you're leaving the garden covers on? I'm gonna leave it on until the weather heats up to where it's at least 70 degrees during the day and at least 50 degrees at night. So I'll leave them on until at least then, and then I may see how much the temperatures are fluctuating. If we're getting a lot of, say, 80 degree days, then I probably will at least roll them back some or replace them with netting. But for now, these are really good protection for me from a lot of the pests we have here. It seems to help keep some of the slugs off. It seems to help keep some of the flying insects off. And so I just like it in addition to the fact that it's giving me a little bit extra warmth, a little extra light in our area because I, my garden doesn't get enough light really to grow the things that I wanna grow. I really struggle with hot 
crops like tomatoes and peppers and things like that that I would like to grow but these cool crops seem to do really well if I start them early and put these ground covers on top of them. So I'm putting them on everything this year <laughs> because it's, it's, it's very helpful. I've actually got carrots sprouting and I probably, I'm thinking about just putting a shape, a cloth on top of those as well. All right. I'm just asking for myself, is it actually called a ground cover or is it called a garden cover? A ground cover, I would call it a ground cover. Um, but it, it's, it, it's not a net, it's, it's actually like semi-warm, thick kind of thing, but if you look under them, there's a lot of light in there because it, it pulls and reflects that sunshine into the bed, so it makes it very bright in there, which is nice, and it gets to all the edges as well, so I, I like that. I'm just looking for good spots and I'm doing like I would with a potato in that I'm looking for the eye and kind of making that the part that's going up. I don't know if that makes any difference. I don't even know if it makes any difference with the potato, but that's what I do and it seems to help. So I figure if nothing else, it's making less work for the plant, kind of like planting your onion bulbs the right way, planting your garlic the right way, planting a flower bulb the correct way. It's kind of the same from principle. How deep? Uh, I'm not going too deep. Look, this is a really nice one. Look at that. That one's going to produce a lot. I am wondering if it's supposed to go the other way, but I guess we'll find out when I see how they had to grow, you know, if they had to go up and over or if they went down this way or what they did, so. And this little cloth is not on this bed really correctly. The, the other ones are a lot better, but this bed size is really difficult to get a cover on, especially with the tops like this, so. And this stuff doesn't really need it either, so I'm just kind of being loosey-goosey with it. So. Where did I put those? I'm pretty excited about these though because people show them digging out just tons of these things out of their bed. So if we like them and they taste good to us, then I might do it in the other bed as well because I think that it would be pretty anyways just to have this bed and that bed be full of these pretty flowers in the summertime. So it's something to think about. This one's a little weird because it looks like it's going every which way, so I guess it doesn't matter too much. And this soil is already our compost, so it's nice and rich and I don't need to amend anything or anything like that. These plants have not taken anything out of it. There's two hawks up there just fighting. Um, so, yeah, so 
like I was saying, we don't need to amend anything at this point or anything like that. It's just all going to be good. And by the time these are flowering, I'll have taken this bar off as well. So the bed can really fill up at that point. So that will be good and we'll have to show you guys at the end of the summer what these flowers look like when they're in bloom and then in the fall we'll have us harvesting them and we'll do, maybe do a taste test with Brian. Brian likes to show himself eating things. I really don't want to eat on camera so sorry you're gonna have to probably miss my reaction. <laughs> Gonna be your outtake. Brian's gonna eat a spinach leaf. He might die. <laughs> fresh from the garden, it doesn't get fresher. Yeah, hopefully that chicken poop was composted. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs>